So Tuesday, September 16th, uh, the market actually came up a little bit. It had dropped so much on the Monday that then um, there was, I think it was down most of the day and had kind of a comeback at the end of the day, if I remember correctly, but it had this sort of like, okay, well, maybe this Lehman thing's going to be okay. And it, we'd shaken out a lot of the bad aspects. And I had promised my wife and my, my three and a half year old son that I was going to be taking him to Disneyland after the market closed that day. It was a painful promise to keep based on everything that was going on with the markets and so forth. I worked about three in the morning to one in the afternoon and then left in the afternoon to go take uh, Mitchell and Jolene to Disneyland. And then that whole afternoon, I start getting these uh, texts and, and announcements and things, uh, alerts on my devices that uh, AIG was being bailed out. And there was a lot of confusion at the time as to what the bailout terms were. But it ended up being that the Federal Reserve was uh, injecting $85 billion of capital. At the time, I think it was going to carry an 8.5% coupon that AIG was going to have to pay. They were obviously wiping out the equity. They fired the whole board of directors and everything. Um, but the reason the Fed felt they needed to do that was that AIG was the insurer at the heart of a lot of these toxic mortgage assets. So, so many banks around the world and so many Wall Street banks had sold insurance contracts on this debt, these collateralized debt obligations to AIG. AIG collected as this huge insurer, collected all these premiums but was on the hook to pay off the other side of what we call credit default swaps. And it was free money for these guys for years, collecting all these premiums and these mortgage bonds were never trading down. The Wall Street firms were all apparently healthy and now all, you know, what had broken loose and AIG was not going to be in any position to make good on how much they owed. And that was a big problem for AIG, but it was an even bigger problem for the world because they had marked on their balance sheets that they didn't have certain exposures they had because they said we had sold that off. We've hedged that in the marketplace with AIG. So there was this contagion effect going on and, and it left the Fed and Treasury saying, how deep are the exposures these Wall Street firms have? I mean, we knew two days ago it was bad enough to bring down Lehman. We knew Merrill felt like they had to go run in a panic sale to Bank of America but is there indeed far more exposure than we even thought possible? And it became necessary to plug the holes that were breaking in the dam by bailing out AIG. What that did is leave a little breathing room for some firms. We'll never know exactly how much of their solvency ended up being protected by that. But it also caused at this point everyone to say, what in the world is going on? How much worse is this? And and it uh, broke the buck in, in money market. It caused uh, from a, a co combination of events. But there were people, the primary reserve fund, that their money market was worth less than $1 par value. And that's that, that represented this type of Armageddon in credit markets and in the global financial system that caused the policymakers to say, um, there, we're in code red. There is no amount of emergency action that we should not be taking. The AIG bailout also started the political backlash um, uh, that would become uh, this kind of concept of bailout nation and some parties being bailed out and some parties not. In this particular case, two days after Lehman was not bailed out, AIG was. Uh, there's defensible reasons for that. One can agree with them, not agree with them. My point being, it was a... Um, a tumultuous time, and now at this point, not just on Wall Street, not just economically, but politically as well.